What's up, everybody? Adam, aka CS Radical, Jin, and Chris here as always. Welcome to Pixel Play SideQuest, your bonus content here every Friday on the YouTube channel, or at least whenever I'm not an idiot and forget to put my audio input into it so we actually have sound there. But that's not happening this week. We're fine. So we get to talk this week about remakes or remasters or something of the two because I'm obviously been playing Aiden Chronicle. I know Chris wants to at some point, but he'll probably be oh, so four much. years away from that with his backlog. <sighs> Yeah, the backlog. Oh, boy. But uh, we thought about it and said, hey, like, Kalen's not here. This is a perfect opportunity for us to just gush about JRPGs because, you know, it's great to do when the JRPG king or the false JRPG king is not here. So we just thought, hey, like, what would be a couple of great games that could get the 2.5D remake or remaster treatment? And uh, Chris, why is Chrono Trigger always at the top of this list? It, because it's such a classic and it would be so beautiful be perfect that was here's the real question though was if you had the choice would you get the 2.5 remake or would you get a full anime in a kira toriyama art style rpg version because the reason that i ask is because mm. i'm actually nervous if a 3d 360 plane chrono trigger might actually not be as good yeah i honestly i'd go with the 2.5d i think i feel like it would still keep the charm um versus like because i'm not saying the 3d one oh no if a kira toriyama full 3d chrono trick existed it would still be amazing to look at yeah. with the gameplay translate as well though that's exactly. the real question right yeah like that's the thing like oh i mean I final fantasy 7 remake made it work with a different slightly altered battle system so you know who knows that is true that is true oh gosh maybe i want that oh I don't know. That's a whole other. That's a whole other side quest. Holy shit! Yeah, that's not. That's not what we're here to talk about. I just figured I'd, I'd throw that question because I love making you sweat just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but in all seriousness, the first one that I thought of, like off the top of my head, without even thinking about it once, was Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, that's such a good one. Oh fuck, that's so good. Yes, yes, it makes so much sense with like triangle strategy and stuff like that already being. Final Fantasy Tactics just with I mean, yeah, realistically, let's set. be real. Square's already made them. They just didn't call them Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Like tactics but like in the case of remastering, now, what would you prefer? Because I actually am really impartial to the advanced game. I actually really like the visual style of that. I, oh, if yeah. I had to choose, I would want that one to be remastered first. Hmm. Although I know I I... the like 95% of Final Fantasy Tactics people would immediately go, yeah, no, the original on PlayStation. Yeah, I would say the original on PlayStation only because... The Game Boy Advance one, I still love that aesthetic today. It still looks like, obviously, I need a bigger screen and stuff compared to a Game Boy Advance. Um, but I'd be fine if they just re-released that one in general, just with a higher resolution. Where the PS1 one, I think, being a PS1 game, it would benefit more from yeah. the upgrade or the update. So that's probably why I'd go with the PS1 one. But honestly, if either of them came out, I would faint from happiness. Because you know, so I none love... of us said uh, Tactics were the Lions or Tactics A2, I think, was the, th was the Vita one. Oh, right. Yeah, no. Yeah, that tells you how much we don't really care much for the... For the uh... I mean, I can't even say <laughs> a bad thing about it because I've never played either of them. But like, I've never gotten the itch to it because I've never heard like unanimously good things about it. No, and I think it was just locked behind either the PSP or the PS Vita, and that kind of just, it never got to expand beyond there, and not as many people played it, and I never did, so yeah, yeah, kind of sucks. So aside from Trigger, what's near the top of your list? So the funny part is is the first game I went to immediately was Xenogears, because I'm always just asking for that game to be remade, but then when I looked back, and I'm looking at that game... I think it's already in 2.5 HD. Yeah, but it's just going to be prettier now. <laughs> yeah, so it's literally that would just be like a re-release with a higher resolution, updated soundtrack. Oh shit! Okay, I'm keeping my answer then. And voice. And Wait, was there voice? I imagine there probably wasn't voice acting in the original, right? There was in the anime cutscenes. Okay, and there so was the full voice acting. Then there we go. Yeah, full voice acting. Holy shit! Yeah, that's what I want. So Maybe even a, a fast forward option too, because a lot of those games get those. Every fucking JRPG needs a fast forward option at this point. I have used them, and I have determined they are a mandatory update. Uh, but that aside, yes, you know what? I'm sticking with Xenogears. Originally, I was going to be like, no, that's not going to be my first pick because it's already the 2.5D game from the PS1 era. It was pixel characters with a 3D environment, and then I was like, wait a minute. Adam has convinced me I need this actually upgraded. So yes, I am going with Xeno Gears for my first one. Sticking on the JRPG train, Capcom. Hey, if you ever want, if you ever want some proof that people want to play these games still, 
do a do a, re, a 2.5D remastering of Breath of Fire 1 or 2 or both, and we'll show you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, actually, speaking of that, that ties in well with my next one. Fun fact, I was playing on my Steam Deck Breath of Fire 1 earlier today. Yeah, I downloaded a ROM. I have it on the Switch Online service, but no fast forward option. So pulling it back to that again, even though I have it available already in a service that I technically have, <laughs> I still uh, grabbed one of the old ROMs I have of it so that I could play it there. Because I legitimately I finished forward. the first two games last year for the first time. Oh, yeah, with fast forward? Uh, well, I wasn't playing on an emulator, so I had the turbo function, right? Yeah, the turbo function. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but for uh, tying that in, another game also, which released on Switch, but I may not necessarily play it there uh, in thing, is Golden Sun. I'm going to just throw Golden Sun 1 and 2 in mm -hmm. there from Game Boy Advance. Uh, again, I hear amazing things. I've never played them. I didn't have, oh, I did have a Game Boy Advance, but very late in its life after it was already done. Um, so never got around to those. Looks great. I hear it's an amazing story, great characters, all that kind of stuff. I think it could definitely use an update for, I don't know, the Nintendo Switch 2 or whatever the heck, obviously, Nintendo would put it on. But yeah, Golden Sun, sticking with JRPGs, obviously, because they translate so well for this. Yeah, they need they need it. Well, I'm going to tie it into something else, but it's going to be our last uh, podcast episode because I'm going to throw into the ring Harvest Moon. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. And I don't know which one's... I mean, I'm gonna, I, I would just say 64 because that's my favorite, but like taking that, giving it that 2.5D kind of coat of paint for it, and like just obviously making some quality of life adjustments, like keep the core there because it's it's done well there. Whereas like, yep. as you said on the on the episode prior, like, it it's not this. It doesn't feel the same anymore. Like they don't have the same, uh, like breadth of life to it that they used to. But like you take what made sixty four or the original on Super Nintendo or Friends of Mineral Town even, and like take those things and just give it like a really beautiful coat of paint. It could be very very good. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Actually, I would probably go with the sixty four one because it's the roughest to go back to. The Super Nintendo one still feels smooth and everything. It still feels like it did back in the day where the N64 one much lower frame rate and whatnot. It, it definitely could use some quality of life. Um, either would be good, but I, yeah, that's the one I would definitely go with. Good picks. Good picks. I want to try and move away from I'm trying to just yeah, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do too is try not to just do, oh yeah, Final Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, because they're like, all right, moving away from there, Honestly, there's so many classic Nintendo games that I start coming to my mind, especially like Super Nintendo ones. You could do some really cool stuff with like a Link to the Past. Uh, yeah, or like kind of like what that. they already did with Link's Awakening. Like, but in the sense of that two point, like the thing, whenever we say the 2.5D stuff, we specifically mean like how Octopath Traveler or yes. uh, the Star Ocean remaster or remix, I should say, or obviously what Aiden Chronicle does now, or um, uh, what's one other game I'm thinking of? Oh my god! Well, like Diofield Chronicle and stuff like that. Like that specific yeah. art style is what we mean, where it's pixel but also three D ish. Yeah, yeah. Like characters are pixeled, but they're in a world where clearly it's like meant to be three D textures and stuff like that. I think my number one, if I had to go with a Nintendo game, I think a Link to the Past would be perfect because yeah, it would work very Link's well with that. Link's Awakening. They've already done a remake where it's like the full three D. It wasn't obviously the two point five. So they've already recently done that one and kind of brought it up to a modern time where I don't think they've done anything for A Link to the Past. I don't think it's, besides just being available to play on Switch Online, I don't think they've remastered or anything. They did a sequel with that, uh, what the heck is that one on 3DS? It's missing my mind. What, A Link Between Worlds? What... Link Between Worlds, thank you. Yes, that one. Um, but I think just taking A Link to the Past and just re-releasing it in that style it would be really cool to have that like 3D environment where Link is, and Link and probably the enemies are pixelated, but the entire environment is all obviously in that uh, 3D style. Um, there was a game on PS3 that very much was mimicking 
a link to the past. It was called like 3D dot heroes or yep. something like that. Yeah, th- yeah, 3D. I think yeah, I think that is the title. Is it 3D dot heroes or 3D dot game heroes? I can't remember which of the two. Yes, but... something like that. And it looked like a very pixelated but 3D version. Now it's not the exact same. They were 3D pixel characters, which is a little bit different, but. That game was incredibly fun to play and nostalgic, but modern at the same time. I think A Link to the Past, where Link and the enemies are like a two-dimensional pixelated character on a 3D environment running around in that, again, 2.5D. I think that one would be incredible. I think that one would be insane. So I've got two more left on my list. I'm going to throw a fun one at the end here. But uh, uh, it's still a Japanese RPG, but it's also like not quite your typical RPG. The trilogy, I can't remember what the name of the actual trilogy is, but the three games that are included is Illusion of Gaia, Soul Blazer, and Terra Enigma. And I mostly want that just because I've never played any of them before. And I'd love an excuse to actually try them, whether it's a package deal or if it's just one of them. Because I think Illusion of Gaia, if I'm not mistaken, was the first. I think so. I think it's called like the Gaia Trilogy or something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. But that would be one because I just want to get the chance to actually try that for once. That's a good one. That's a cool one. I'm going to try something a little different and try and take an actually very modern game and like demodernize it. I was down. that's how I was going to end it. Was say like, "Hey, what would be a cool one that if in the in that's like a modern game that got brought back to it?" Oh, okay. Do you want me to then Yeah, if do you have any more uh like older ones first and then we'll end off of like what we think would be like oh, the one coolest option to do backwards. Think about a bunch of them. And for some reason I'm thinking along the lines of because I could go back to NES. Anything that kind of already was pixelated is pretty easy. I almost could say, like, most of the Super Nintendo library, stuff like that. Yeah. Just make the backgrounds now 3D, but keep the characters as they were in their t- 2D form. You could do any JRPG. You could do any of the Final Fantasies. Like, you could do anything. Like, you could even do, like, a Super Mario World and stuff, and it would be pretty cool. Um, but that's almost too easy because I'm thinking... What if you took something like, you know, PS1 game, some and Square Enix is the one that's doing a lot of these. What if they did like Parasite Eve? You know what I mean? What if they took something that almost looks like, because the 3D textures, let's face it, some of them do look a little bit like a PS1 game sometimes, the way they design it. That's the art style in these 2.5Ds. What if you had a 3D world of Parasite Eve, but, you know, you redesigned Eve, obviously, and all the other characters to be pixelated right some of the enemies maybe bosses are in 3d but the lesser enemies are still also in 2d that kind of thing like i think that would be a very cool art style um and a way to also bring back a franchise right like this would work for a lot of the ps1 games you could do dino crisis you could do parasite eve you could basically take any 3d um platformer or game that was set in a 3d environment on the ps1 and go through and do this. And I think that it would actually still be just as nostalgic because for us, when we talk about Chrono Trigger or anything like that, it's that the characters were already 2D and we're bringing that 2D character into a 3D world. I think it'd be kind of cool to go to a PS1 because that's where you leave the world looking like it's a PS1 game and all you're doing is taking the 3D character, which by today's standards looks like shit. You cannot see like any of what these characters look like. Look in Final Fantasy VIII, look at uh, Squall's face. You can't see what the heck is going on, right? But if you make them 2D and keep the 3D world, it's still just as nostalgic for PS1 games. Um, It's more that you change the character versus the background, unlike the Super Nintendo where you're changing the background versus changing the character. So I think that'd be kind of cool. I'd be very interested in that. So I'm going to throw two completely off the board ones. Like, otherwise, like, Castlevania Metro would be amazing ones, too, but that's, like, those are pretty obvious picks. So here's two really random ones. First one, Super Dodgeball Advance. <laughs> I, was, I, I can't, I was, I had, like, a bunch of things going through my head. Not a single one of them was that. There's no one, that caught me right off guard. I love it, though. I'm on board. Like, that, like, even, like, that would be a pretty cool, like, imagine that as, like, an online game, too. Yeah. Just oh, make sure you put peer-to-peer servers. <laughs> pulling it right back to go watch our last episode it's right? really good <laughs> but yeah like that's a game that i always love a lot and like i think it would be really cool to have like a 60 frame per second like super chill like fun little like um 2.5d sort of setup there i think that'd be pretty neat here's the other really off the board one i would not play this and you wouldn't either but clock tower from super nintendo oh 
That is really good. And you're right. There's no fucking way I'm touching that. I'm way too scared. But I love that idea. I love that idea. That's good. I mean, the oh, fact that clock, I'm, I wish the clock tower would get a comeback too. Because I look, I will never play them, but I lo- I want people of every genre to just have some of the best stuff. Because the original clock tower is a fucking legendary horror game. Yeah, and most people oh, don't very. know about it. That's true. That's a good way to also you know bring back a game. Speaking of random things, here's just a random aside. Uh, one of my friends was recently playing the new Alone in the Dark game. David Harbour oh is the is one of the main characters in it, and his facial scans no. in there, and his voice acting and everything. It's interesting, but it also reminds me of why I don't like those games, not just for the horror thing. The puzzles are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. They, they hope... kept the ridiculously stupid puzzles in that game. Oh, oh. But yeah, oh, if you, if you got a, any more uh, uh, older ones left, and then we'll finish up with, with one game that we think would be really cool if it was uh, downgraded. Maybe more than one, but we'll see how that goes. I've got, I've, I'm ready for my modern downgrade one. Okay. Well, then the last thing I'll just throw in for the old ones, Secret of Mana. Oh. Secret yeah. of Mana. Oh, that would translate so easy. So easy. And or, be so um, beautiful. Or because you're a big Tales guy, Tales of Fantasia. Oh, any of the old Tales, because those ones, like, especially since Tales is still going and very 3D, very anime, that could that could use it. Yeah. And I think that'd be a really good way just, to Just to get a couple of Jeremy's in there. Okay, so for modern stuff, immediately, and this is also because of a lot of games that have come out that are tactics based XCOM would be a fucking great 2.5 D game. Oh, that's a good pick. I'm picturing like you killing an enemy and the pixels literally falling apart when you shoot them. Yeah. Oh, that would be so sick. I want that now. I want that right now. Oh, that's such a good pick. Oh, that's my favorite one so far. I think, (laughs) Oh, I don't know why. What can I say? I'm really, I'm really good. (laughs) Um, so one I've got, uh, this would, I would, I mean, it could be any of the ones that are already out, but I think even as a sequel, and this could sound ridiculous, they would never do it because of, of, I, I've, I don't know. I feel like the fans wouldn't appreciate it, but like dark souls four, like take a dark souls game fully same concept. It's hard as shit, big ass fucking bosses. Either they can be 3d or pixelated, but just to make you feel even more weaker than you already are. Because it makes you feel like you're playing a kid's game, but it's not. It's like it's like how people really like Hollow Knight and Salt and Sanctuary. Yes, exactly. Like imagine your character is just this 2D pixelated character and maybe you can design them or something, but like they're in this massive 3D world and it's hard as fucking shit. And you still get weapons and you can get ridiculous with it. You can get like massive swords or something. I don't know. Like it could get just as ridiculous. Maybe the sword is actually a 3D item while you're still 2D. That'd be very funny. Um, But yeah, I think taking something like a Souls game or a Souls-like and then making it in this style, I think it would also bring another audience to the genre. Like, Because I know I would try it way more than I would try something like Elden Ring Mm -hmm. where I know it's still hard as shit and it's very dreary and stuff like that like i get it that's what people like in that genre but if you make it this way i feel like it would have like the hardcore people would still try it and some people like me where it's like i've normally avoided that i'd be like well i have to try it like it's a soul yeah it's like like elden ring like eventually i'm like i know i'm not gonna get through this but i gotta at least try this once just to get it out of my system yeah it's like it's elden ring but the main character looks like simon belmont from castlevania on nes i love this like (laughs) Uh, hmm. How would I go about this? I it's funny too because I had a game and then I just completely lost it. Nice. It's your fault. Yeah. Why did you do this? I'm to sorry. Me? It's it is my fault, and I do apologize. I officially apologize to everyone listening to the podcast. Oh, there we go. Uh, Mega Man Legends Three could finally happen with that. Holy crap! That's a really good pick because we're actually waiting on that game. It's supposed to be out in one day. Soon, yeah that's what right? we've heard for the last <laughs> how many years 20 years i don't something like know. that frig me yeah that is god that's a good way to or even just mega man battle network like if they just want to do something like that oh. again yes yes that would be sick i would love that or just oh, to just do a 2.5 d rem- uh, remake of a uh, mega man x command mission from the uh, ps2 days oh yeah oh yeah ps2 games again very much would work i feel like my ps1 theory where you're just taking the character down while keeping the textures kind of like still that now retro looking but still 3d environments 
Oh yeah. What else you got? I got one more, and that's gonna be it for me. I've only got one more too, so that's perfect. Okay. I I'm gonna pick another like modern wise. Another game I wanted to play, and it would kind of reintroduce a little bit of excitement for it. Assassin's Creed. I would love an Assassin's. Yeah, Creed kind of similar to like how stuff. like the um the two D scroller ones are. Yeah. Even even if it was still a three D environment, I think it would be fucking hilarious jumping off a roof. That's completely 3D in the haze down there, but you're just this pixelated character jumping off. And then in the end, falling. it goes to a lo- like a full, like perfectly 3D render cutscene, and it's you realize it's a kid the entire time. <laughs> it's just the kid's version of the Animus. Oh, it's so good. I love this. Yeah, I'm starting to think about this like the Lego games. Like, what can I take that's a modern big thing, but kind of make it a little ridiculous by the main character being a pixelated character? But yeah, I think something like an Assassin's Creed or any of these open world games, because again, I feel like people are like kind of getting sick of them and the bloat of them and they're all kind of look the same. This would at least do something different in the genre mm-hmm. that would maybe bring a few people in because it's interesting and would probably be shorter, a little bit cheaper and stuff like that too, which is good. So the last one that I thought of, and this is also because like I think it'd be really, really cool to bring these in a different light because a lot of people have never played these before because they and a lot of people don't even know that these two that these two games even exist because they always know a different set of games from the series but the nes games of metal gear and metal gear 2 solid snake wow that's also a really good pick because most people here's the thing until like until like i remember seeing um i think it was ego raptor who first talked about it or maybe it was either him or it was something through gdq i can't remember where but like i had no idea that there were games before metal gear solid for the longest time oh really and you know yeah, that there's going to be a lot a of people thing. now that'll look at metal gear and be like yeah so that started on the playstation right oh no no metal gear one and two on the NES. That has I been found a series since 1987. Yeah, they've been around for a long time. But I, I completely understand why you wouldn't have known that and why so many people don't. Because I didn't find out about that till like the 2000s. And it was only because some of the dialogue in Metal Gear Solid, I was like, why are they talking about this like I should already know what it is? To be when fair, Metal Gear, Metal Gear games, even when it's new information, act like you should know what they're talking about. <laughs> that is true. Um but a lot of what they're talking about with Big Boss in that first game is from in Metal Gear Solid, sorry, the first PS1 game, is about those two NES games. They talk about like Zanzibar or whatever it is, like all that stuff. That is literally those games. Um, and that's what Metal Gear Solid 5 is leading into those games, which is what's kind of crazy and no one really knows. So yeah, I think bringing that back in that style and then making it less hard because I played those games and they're really, really, really fucking hard. I think that would be uh, a great yeah, idea. I mean, you see the amount of buzz that the um, Snake Eater remake is getting. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't take nearly, like, the amount of... Re- like, or, here again, we've said this before, companies, if you don't want to do anything with the license, literally, go find a bunch of... Fa- like, go find, like, a fan subreddit or some sort of, like, fan community... And say, hey, like I see some of you are working on this like passion project of like just remaking like this like this game, like just remaking like a level of a game you really, really like in this sort of format. Hey, what if we like pay you like a small amount and like, hey, spend five years, like give the give the give a kid like 20 grand, 25 grand, like just some just like a small, like a peanuts number to you. And say, hey start building something, come back and we'll check back in you with you in a, in a year or so. And we'll see where we're at and we'll see what we think about it. And if we want to keep going with that, we'll keep going with it. Yeah. And just I love try it. stuff. Cause it's something that they genuinely love. And if they think that not only are they going to get paid for it, but they might get a future job out of that with the series they love. You think they're not going to fucking try. Oh, hundred percent. Oh yeah. And they're going to do much the better amount of than... fan projects that Nintendo alone shoots down. Can you imagine what would happen if they said, Hey guys, Here's like just a little bit of extra money. Go finish that. We'll see how the finished product is and we'll see what we want to do with it. Can you imagine oh what God. would happen if a, just a couple of companies actually did that shit? Yeah. The amount of cool yeah. stuff that we would get that doesn't cost them almost anything because they're not paying as nearly as much in these developers. 
And at yeah, the same time, it's the like, there are things they weren't going to do. I know some people are going to be like, oh, so they're just going to start like throwing like smaller amounts of money at these fan projects. I'm like, yeah, because they weren't going to do anything anyway. So what's the difference? Yeah, exactly. And then if they really like it, they hire those people or don't. It doesn't affect either because here's the thing. If they don't hire that person and it's a good project, someone else will. That's yeah. the thing. If it does well enough, someone's going to look at who made that and go, I want them on my um, on my team because they know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. It would add to their portfolio for sure. Exactly. It would be a genius move. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty damn good list of stuff. That is. I I want so many of these, like the XCOM one and the Metal Gear one. Holy well, crap. I hope, I I hope you, uh, you communicate with your backlog what's coming then. Fuck. <laughs> you're going to have to have the conversation. Like you're pulling your wife aside and be like, I, I got something to tell you. Yeah. I I'm cheating on already. you with, with about 14 other games that we just brought up on this, you know, yeah. fictional, fictional things that might never exist. When I'm loading up an old game boy or super Nintendo game on switch online, my backlog looks at me like, am I a joke to you? You've already beaten that game 10 times in the last 20 years. What the fuck's wrong with you? Then I'm like, I don't know. Comfort food. Leave me alone. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's let's be real. Some of those giving you your backlog, you're never touching, and it's not because you don't want to. It's just because, look, their time's passed. Yeah, their time has passed. But hopefully, for some of these properties that we mentioned, the time hasn't passed, and maybe by making these games in that format, they'll be timeless. Yeah, and... I like it. Hey. But hey, that's <laughs> gonna be it. So hey, you're watching here on YouTube. You got any ideas? Anything that we missed? I'm sure we did because there's not like a thousands and thousands of games out there. And that includes, hey, is there games that you think would be really cool if they reverse remastered into 2.5D or the opposite? Are there some really old NES, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy, like whatever it may be that you think it suffered? Jeez, Pokemon Red and Blue. That's a great example right off the top. They already did that with the huh. Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, but no, that's incorrect. We don't want 3D. We don't want that 3D BS. No, it's BS. We want 2.5. But yeah, you got any ideas there, guys, watching this? Comment below. And also, don't forget, like this video and subscribe. Remember, as we said on the show this week, 250 subs, extra bonus episode just about cereal. Do you actually want that? I don't know, but we're going to do it anyway. So, hey, make us do more work. So subscribe. Make us do more. Make my job worse that I have to, like, spend five more minutes editing something. Whatever. Shut up. Anyways, watch more content from us. So every Wednesday at, at I was almost going to say noon. Oh, it is noon. I'm thinking I'm mixing my time. Wednesday at noon Eastern for the main show Fridays at 6 PM for the side quest. And obviously, as you can see on the screen there, link TR dot double E slash pixel play podcast, link to our socials, link to our discord, all that jazz, but we will see you on the next, whether it's episode or side quest, whatever it may be. We will see you guys down the road. Take care. Bye-bye for now.